Hi and welcome to an Ideal Calibrations How to Calibrate Your Gas Detector Series video. Today we're going to be looking at the Gas Alert Micro Clip X3. Uh, it's a standard 4 gas unit, kind of small in size. Uh, it's one of the newer ones. They still offer the XL, the Micro Clip XL, but this is the 3 year sensor. So that's the X3, so it's got a 3 year warranty. Also has a different oxygen sensor. So let's, uh, let's get this started and we'll get into calibration. Press and hold the button on the right. And it's going to go through a startup menu, and it'll show you things like the alarm slash cal date, uh, our company name, ideal calibrations there. You can program this to show whatever you want at the beginning. And so while that's doing that and going through the alarms, let's put this regulator in. Uh, first thing to do, take your regulator, and you want to open this valve. So turn it counterclockwise. Open it, back it off, and we're going to screw it in the cylinder. You want to open that all the time before you screw it in, you go ahead and screw in the cylinder all the way and then close the valve on the regulator. But the reason you want to do that is there's a space here in the regulator and in the cylinder valve and what you want to have happen is you want to have this open so that when this pressure comes it blows any moisture that's in there out this way, any moist air from the room, rather than trapping it in here with this close and it potentially going back into your cylinder, which will do bad things to your H2S and make the H2S drop. I'm sure, I'm sure you've all experienced an H2S cylinder fade, so that's one of the things that contributes to it. Let's put that aside. Put our oops, my little piece of paper there. Go ahead and put the tubing on the regulator. I like to go just past the first barb. Uh, don't go any farther than that, or it's hard to get this tubing off. Okay. Regulator we're using is a 0 0.5 liter per minute regulator. So on my monitor here, if you were watching the screen here. Uh, you'll notice mine doesn't go into auto zero. These from the factory, when you get them, they go into a mode called auto zero, which essentially what's happening is it, it starts up and then the first thing it does is zero. And I'm not a huge fan of this because sometimes you might start up the unit, you might already be in a bad environment. Maybe you're behind a truck. Uh, maybe you're just having to be near the door. It's just generally it's one of those things that I just prefer to avoid. So I turn off the auto zero on startup. That way I'm only zeroing when I want to. So. Let's go through here and we'll go through the process. So to get into calibration mode on this unit, press and hold the button two, one, and keep holding it now and wait for that countdown. Cal, let go of the button. Now it's going to auto zero. So now we're going to get ready with, with our tubing and a cal adapter. Hook it onto here first and put it down and clip that over. Uh, turn your gas on and it's going to start detecting the gas. Uh, this unit has a little bit longer calibration time than some other units that we work on. Uh, what's interesting, the zero is one of the quickest out of all of them. So you'll notice that the apply gas field came up rather quickly. Uh, so what the unit's doing now is it's reading the gas and this is what it's seeing on the sensing sensors right now. And what it's doing is it's actively trying to readjust the value that it sees to what's on your calibration gas cylinder. And in this case, for this calibration, should have verified this before we put it on, but that's no problem. Uh, it's 25 parts per million hydrogen sulfide, 100 parts per million carbon monoxide, 50% LEL methane, and 18% oxygen. The thing we always want to check on CalGas, you want to check this expiration date and make sure you're well within the expiration. Um, the older calibration gas gets, the, the more likely it is that this hydrogen sulfide component starts to fade. You'll see that in other sens sensors as well, uh, or gases more so. If you look at like ammonia, chlorine, nitrogen dioxide, those are all huge candidates for potential failure. So you got to keep an eye on those and make sure that you're getting the most use out of it during your warranty period. Usually those are warranted two years on these cylinders like this. And, uh, some of the exotics like ammonia, chlorine, they might be a one year or a six month even in some cases for low part per million chlorine. But just keep an eye on that expiration. That's a hard expiration. you got to get rid of the cylinder once that comes up. Like I said, this, this one's a little bit long compared to some of the other calibration cycles out there, but that's not a bad thing. Uh, it's just making sure that it's got the proper accuracy for your unit. OK. 
Okay, perfect. Everything passed, giving us the 180 day countdown now. Let's turn our gas off. Right there. And pop the hood. Okay, you're just going to go into alarm here as it comes down. We're going to let it come down all the way. And then we're going to go through and we're going to do a, a bump test. I'm going to walk you through the procedure on this unit. Now, if you have a docking station, you just obviously you just put the unit into the dock. But this is how you do a manual bump if you don't have a docking station and you just have some paperwork. So if you want to run a bump test on this unit, all we need to do is take our calibration gas and our, our tubing cal adapter here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put this on here and we're going to run it for about 15 seconds or so. We don't need to make sure that the sensors get up all the way. Make sure that clicks in good. Uh, we don't need to make sure the sensors get up all the way and read what's on our cylinder. We just need to make sure that they're all going up and that all the alarms are going off. So specifically, that's the flashers, that's that's the horn, and that's the vibrating alarm that we need to be able to hear that horn loud and clear and feel that vibrating alarm. So let's turn the gas on. And you can tell this goes really quick. Okay, perfect. All three alarms, I can hear them. Gases are moving. That's it. So you've just run a bump test. So now you can go on your paperwork, you can record that you heard all three, you heard the horn, you saw the strobes, and you could feel the vibrating alarm. Uh, all four sensors move towards their intended destination. So if you have a cal sheet from us or a bump sheet, then you can just check those off. Um, and then you make sure you date it and initial it. And if you save that, just in case, if anyone ever needs to look at your records, you, they'll know that you've done your daily bump test. It has to be done every day. All right, turn on the unit off. You just press and hold the button, and you're good to go. Alright, and if you guys have any questions on any of this, you know you can always give us a call at 734-956-0539 or you can email us to support at idealcalibrations.com or leave a comment. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel if you can. We'd appreciate it. And stay safe out there. Thank you.